Hey, it's Corbett Lunsford from Green Dream Group in Chicago. Today we're going to talk about measuring air flows. In our clients' homes, when we go out and test, we find that most fans do not have the right air flow that they're actually marked with. That's because when they're put uh, onto a test table like this in a factory, they don't have any ductwork connected to them. So we're going to look at how to then test this stuff with some actual ductwork connected to it. Right now, though, all I have on the table is an exhaust fan. Uh, as you can see, it's moving air with the little flags here. Now, when you look at the guts of this thing, you can see clearly that this is not your average exhaust fan. First of all, we've got a very nice, very quiet motor. Uh, this is important because you're going to want to run these, obviously, and if they're loud, they're annoying. I can also have this run indefinitely at a lower CFM, and I can use this as a whole house mechanical ventilation device, which is actually required by law in our state of Illinois, and it's going to be at some point across the entire country. Now we're going to do eight tests on this fan uh, with and without ductwork connected to it. If you have any questions about all the rest of the stuff that we're going to talk about in this video, my book, Home Performance Diagnostics, describes all eight of these techniques. And anybody can get this. It's online at homeperformancebook.com. The first tool we're going to use is called a flow meter. It's a flow pan, essentially. It's a box with a hole cut into it. So I'm going to put this so that it completely covers the fan. And we have the readout right here. Now, what you're seeing on the top is the pressure inside this box with relationship to where we're standing out in the room. The second channel here on the bottom is showing us the cubic feet per minute, which is what we're going to measure all of these airflows in. All airflow is measured in cubic feet per minute. So as you can see, we're moving a little bit better than what we're actually rated for, and that's because we have no duct torque connected to this. Now, if you do not own one of these calibrated boxes, and by the way, the reason this is cool is because, number one, it's airtight. It's got this nice weather stripping on it. Number two, it's got a hole size that is adjustable. And as you can see, I'm starting to increase the pressure here on channel A. And you can also hear that the fan is gearing up. That's one of the really cool features of this Panasonic fan is that it will deal with the greater resistance by fighting harder to push more air. That's something that you won't find in every fan. So if I'd like to measure this without this particular model, you could do this right now yourself by cutting a hole into a cardboard box. I'm going to show you that. Now here I have a box I made myself. Uh, cut a hole into it. It is 20 square inches, 5 inches by 4 inches. That's because that's a good size to start with. I have my smart gauge hooked up and I'm simply going to cover the hole uh, for the exhaust fan with my box. And I've got my smart gauge from Retrotech configured with the exact size of my hole so now I can both monitor the pressure just like I was before and monitor the CFM. I want to create an airtight seal as much as possible around this. So as you can see, we've got a pressure of negative 10 and a half and a flow of around 71 CFM, which is pretty good. So what we're going to do is, number one, place this over the exhaust fan just like before. Now what has happened right now is that we have just restricted the flow of this fan. So the fan itself, because it's super smart and awesome, is gearing up and trying to push harder because it's resisting uh, from this. So what we have here is a fan inside this. This is called a powered flow hood. So what we're going to do is use this to compensate the pressure inside this box to make sure that this box is at neutral pressure so that we know that every CFM leaving the box is the same as the CFM that are coming into the box. And once we've established what that is, 76.5 CFM then we know that this is uh, about as accurate as we can get. This method is one of the gold standards that we're using now. We're going to show you several other methods coming up here, and let's go ahead and attach a duct to this system before we do that. Now we've hooked up the exhaust fan with a duct. This is a very big 8-inch duct. It's very unlikely that it's going to be that way in your house, but it's okay. This is a demonstration. We're going to be able to measure the airflow inside this duct. We've got several ports. First thing that we've done is we've hooked this up with a highly calibrated duct testing fan over here. Now this fan is introducing resistance into this ductwork, just like with the other powered flow hood. So we're using a piece of equipment you might already own to build a powered flow hood essentially out of this. What we want to do, just like before, is make the pressure inside this box, this duct, equal zero uh, with reference to out here. And when we have done that, then we know that we've got the same amount of CFM out as CFM in, and that is the right number. So you're going to be able to monitor that 
flow right over here, and we've got it referenced right over here with our handy dandy flow pan. So what I'm going to do to get this fan to run so that we can equalize this pressure is use my smartphone app and make my smart gauge uh, activate. And we're just about to hit zero right now, and I'm reading 79.4 CFM through my duct testing fan. So that's what we're going to record for this powered flow hood in the second configuration. Next, we're going to use the pitot tube. The pitot tube measures two things. One is the total pressure, which is right here in the tip of this probe, and the other is the static pressure, which is around it. You're going to subtract, you don't have to, the gauge is going to do it for you. You're going to subtract the static pressure from the total pressure, and that gives you the velocity pressure, which tells you how much pressure there is moving this way. So what we're going to do is we've set the time average on this up to eight seconds, and I'm going to take a uh, traverse, which means I'm going to go back and forth across this duct to make sure that I get a good sample of all of the pressures that are going on throughout it, because obviously there's turbulence inside. So I'm gonna, I gotta keep it pointed into the airflow. I'm gonna go to the bottom of the duct, and I'm gonna work my way back. And we have 0 0.0035 as this sample that we just took. So we're going to put that into the computer and we have to adjust for the density of the air inside this duct. Uh, and we're going to do that with the following calculation. Next, we're going to use a small vane anemometer. This is meant to be inserted into the middle of a duct. I'm going to do the same exact traverse type pattern to pick up all of the different air flows throughout the duct. Uh, I'm just going to be using one hole. Now, the location of this hole is really important. You want it to be free of turbulence upstream and downstream. And so we've picked this spot. This is a uh, best worst case spot, and which is what you're generally going to have to use in real life as well. I'm going to make sure that this points directly into the airflow at all times, and I'm going to be using a timed mean. You're going to have to practice this. Your technique needs to be perfect. And we have a mean feet per minute of 265. So let's go ahead and put that into our calculation and figure out how many CFM that is. Now for the large vein anemometer. This is also going to be just counting the rotations of a vein. We're going to use that on the direct face of the exhaust fan here. Now there's a couple things going on. Number one, we got to use a timed average just like we did before. We're going to take a reading of the entire face of this grill because there might be different turbulent features going on. The other thing is that we don't know much about this grill itself. It is going to be inducing some kind of a resistance. So in order to calculate the CFM, um, there are some funny things that happen on the supply side and return side of duct systems. I just want to make sure you are aware of that before you start using this, uh, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and use a timed average. Let it get running first so that the veins start turning and I don't get a lower reading than I'm actually looking for. And I begin. My uh, mean average is 228 feet per minute. Now to know how many cubic feet per minute are going through this opening, we need to know how big the opening is. So we're going to go ahead and measure. I've got 9 inches by 9 inches. So that's 81 square inches. However, there are these big, thick bands of plastic that are going through this, so that's going to mess with my calculation a little bit. Now let's go ahead and take this off so that we can get a more direct measurement. First, I need to measure this. So I've got a 6 inch round. I'm going to do the calculation to figure out how many square inches that represents. Get my large vein anemometer set up with a timed average. Let the vein move. Start my timed average. And I'm done. That represents 439 feet per minute. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate how many CFM that represents. Last measurement, 
the plastic trash bag. So what I've got here is a 30 gallon plastic trash bag, lightweight, not contractor grade, connected to a needlepoint uh, frame. So what we're gonna do is just time three of these to make sure that we're as accurate as possible. I'm on the exhaust side of this, meaning that there's air coming out of this fan. So I'm gonna just crunch, scrunch this down so that it's nice and closed and not full of any air at all. I'm gonna go ahead and time this. So ready, set, go. And done. And done. Go. Done. So now you've seen eight ways to measure airflow. As you have seen, some of them are more accurate, some of them are less expensive. I hope that you pick at least one because proof is possible. Happy testing. This has been Building Performance Workshop. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Tune in next time. <laughs>